There are events and situations in life that we can control and some that we cannot. All of us have so many demands placed upon us on a daily basis. Demands from our jobs, families, health, finances, friends, and life in general. Those demands can manifest themselves into stress. The National Health Interview Survey says millions of Americans suffer from unhealthy levels of stress. Half of those people experience moderate or high levels of stress during the same two-week period. My name is Ronika Jacobs, and you found my podcast, Strive for More, Your Best Life Now. While there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, you've taken the time out to listen to this one. So for that, I would like to say thank you. So without any further delay, let's get to it. Let's strive for more. This is episode 204, Release the Stress, It's Killing You. My next guest, Lolita Guarín, is helping people strive for more by teaching them strategy to reduce their stress level. Lolita is a stress management expert. She is the author of Crush Stress While You Work, a practical guide that helps you reduce your stress level at work. In this episode... She will tell us a little about her journey into her passion for stress management and share ways to manage your stress level while working from home, homeschooling your kids, and handling other life tasks in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hi, Lolita. Welcome. Well, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. How are you? Well, you know, I was just thinking today it's nice to be at home, but I am starting missing my Indian buffet, you know, believe it or not. <laughs> I understand. I understand. You know, it, these days have been so interesting. On You feel blessed that you have your family and you get to spend more time with them. But at the same time, you start realizing, wait, I miss going you know, here, and I miss going there, it's it's really a quite an, an interesting phenomenon, you know? Yes, and I think what we all are learning now, which we never knew how to do, is how are we going to deal with ourselves, with those that are around us, with the workload, and, and I'm sure that, you know, it, we all experiencing some sort of trauma through all of this pandemic, because seriously, now I, we feel like, you know, we're all locked up in the house, and When you really want to go, you you just can't. It's like a home arrest. You know what? That is true, which brings me to my first question for you. So, yes, we're all trapped in the house. um, And uh, for some of us, we feel more trapped than others. And, you know, over time, I'm sure some people are, are like I have been dealing. It's just really stressed out and overwhelmed. And with you being a stress management expert, so how did you get interested in stress management? Well, any time that I go to any networking and I say that I'm a stress management expert, you know, everyone says, wow, you know, that's so rare. And to be honest, it's very rare to find another stress management expert or coach or speaker like I am. And it's not like I wake up one day and I said, hey, you know, I want to be a stress management coach because it's so rare. No, you know, it didn't happen to me like that. Um, as you can tell with my, you know, from my accent, I came here to U.S. 20 years ago from Lithuania. And, um, you know, I just started working and working my, at my American dream. And I wanted to prove to myself and, you know, my supervisor, my family that I can do it. And I knew if I will work hard and I will push it, you know, I'll achieve great results. Because, you know, as we all know, this is the land of opportunities 
So, uh, you know, soon I realized I was working, you know, 60 hours a week. I had no time to take lunch and working weekends and no time for exercise. My nutrition obviously was bad. And I just worked and worked. And I, I know I, I couldn't say no because I was afraid I'll get fired or, you know, I'll hurt somebody else's feelings. And so basically I got myself to the point that all of this stress that was, you know, causing to my body and my mind really just messed up my hormones and my body. And I just said, okay, it's enough. And after I ended up in the emergency room, I figured, you know, something's wrong. And I just didn't want to go to another doctor and say, hey, you know, just give me a pill and, you know, how I can fix myself and off I go. I was like, okay, well, it has to be a better way. We all live with stress. It's impossible to live without stress. You know, you just go outside and it's already stressful to your body if you change of temperature already happens. So... I started learning a lot of how to manage stress in a normal, you know, like natural environment, natural ways. And, uh, you know, I read any book and workshops, coaching, name it, I've done it. And I found there's plenty of things that we can do. And it doesn't have to be complicated that we can apply it all through the day so we don't end up collapsing at the end of it. And so then when I start applying to my life and I, you know, I, I told some other friends and and then uh, one day, a well, lady says, look, you can be a coach. And I was like, whoa, coach, okay. That's new to me because I never thought about coaching. But I really had this passion of helping others. And I wanted to share, you know, that my experience that, look, this stress thing doesn't have to be so big. You know, we think because the problem is big, then the solution needs to be big. No, it could be something very simple. You know, this, this stress management this necessarily needs to be stressful. You know, it should be easy. And there are plenty of th- things that you can do during the day that it helps you with your productivity and your burnout and with your relationships and pretty much you know stress can impact all your life so if you apply little tips and tricks you know through your day you know it can help you to manage and be happy nice yes and you know what I think that is one thing that we all like to strive for is being happy and having happiness in our life when people say things like I'm so stressed or I've just been stressed out. Or you know, people look at stress in different ways. For some people, stress, one minor thing can stress them out. And then other people, uh, you know, it could be a lot of things ha- that happen to them and then they get stressed out. So, But what makes stress so bad? If it's inconsistent from one person to another, I mean, but what makes it so bad? Well, uh, first one, you know, I, I think there are two parts to the, to this, to the stress. One stress is when happening to your physical body. And for example, you know, if you, you know, catch a virus, you know, that's obviously is, is stressful to your body and there are different all kinds of illnesses and, you know, and diseases that cause stress to your physical body or bad nutrition or lack of exercise or just pretty much sitting in one position the whole day, you know, it hurts because, well, you didn't stretch enough, you know, you didn't uh, move enough and you didn't nurture your body enough. So there's some things that are coming really from the environment that we, that we can control like stretch and move, or we cannot control. For example, it's just cold, you know, outside. <laughs> you know, of course, we in Houston don't have winters, but up north and where I'm from, you know, you can have winters. So, you know, that could very st- be stressful to your body. But I think the majority of our stress really comes from the mind uh, because we just um, manage things very different way. It really depends on the point of view that you're looking at something. And, you know, I, I noticed that the... We all th- so somehow there is this uh, perception that uh, well, since everybody stresses and it's impossible to live without stress, then then you should be okay with that. And in reality, you shouldn't. And there's so much diseases actually to your body is caused by stress because uh, the f- number one killer of women actually is uh, a heart disease, and the heart disease is really comes from the inflammation to your body, and stress causes inflammation. So you know, when you think about it, in the long run, stress is really killing you, you know. And so first, there are lots of people think, well, because we all stressed out, and well, what are you going to do about it? Well, this is the wrong perception. We need to shift our um, understanding of how we live with the stress, and it's not okay to live with it. We need to learn how to manage it. But the thing is that no, nobody teaching us how to do it. 
And then uh, another uh, thing is we all think that has to be somehow very complicated. It doesn't have to. A few things you can do that can help you with that. And also I noticed there are so many um, the clients that they come to me for coaching. I hear this all the time. They say, I have to take care of my family. I have to run my career. I don't have time for this. And more than that, they just feel uh, guilty when I tell them, look, you need to take a break. You need to just take like one minute every hour, just shut whatever you're doing, just sit down, close your eyes, and just tell yourself, this minute is for me. You just, just relax, just breathe in, out, and just stop what you're doing. And I have so many clients that tell me, no, you don't understand. I don't have time for this. Yes, yes. You, all those things that you said, they resonate with me so well. I try my best in my mind, as you said. I try to think about, okay, is this something that I can control or is this something that I cannot control? And so in thinking of those things, it would be nice since I decide what I can control and if it's something that I can't control and just not worry about it, and then I would avoid stress, right? So is it possible to avoid stress? So I, I think um, – there are two ways uh, uh, we know how, how you can, I can break it down, how you can manage stress. One thing is to do some things during your day or have an attitude towards things that just kind of goes from day to day. So you don't kind of pile up the stress and does not impact your body and you end up sick, right? So you, you don't you take breaks to take care of your body, nutrition and exercise. But um, also you have to... Uh, think more than you know, taking yourself a break. Well, for example, let's say if I'll give you a glass or um, full of water, and I will tell you, tell me how heavy is the glass. Well, you see, it depends how long you're going to hold it. If you will be holding for an hour, probably you know, your hand's going to hurt, right? That's stress to your body. But if you will pick it up and then you put it down, pick it up and then you put it down, then you can do this all day long. So this is how it is we need to look at everything that we do. You know, we have to mm. schedule the breaks and take care of ourselves and that busy schedule as well. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be like taking one minute, just total break every hour. And we have technology around us. We can put an alarm and we can, you know, remind us. Then find you, especially if, if you know, if someone who has a business or now everybody working at home, uh, Make your time that, you know, maybe you work 45 minutes and then you take five, 10 minutes break. And then you work again 45 minutes, which is called Pomodoro uh, uh, method. You can find different uh, time increments that you can take a break, whatever works for you. Or maybe also you are more uh, productive in the morning than at evening. Then do the majority of projects and things that need your brain work on that productive time. Also very important yes. in the situations like that, breathe in, breathe out. I know it so, sounds so simple, but so many of us, I remember myself, when I would get stressed out, I will just breathe in and stop breathing. Should be breathing in and out. And, you know, wow. don't, mm -hmm. and don't, don't underestimate the simple breath. You know, this is very powerful. And, you know, I heard there are so many breathing te techniques, you know, they say, oh, you count to five, breathe in, then you hold, then breathe out, breathe out. But, you know, there's so many five by five, five by seven, and eight by eight, all kinds of techniques. Really, it, you know, don't think about it when you're breathing in, breathing out. It really depends how big are your lungs and how fast you can count. So I'll just recommend just breathing in deeply and then breathing out. Do like five to ten times and this is what it does. It slows your heart down. So when you is, is racing and you is stressing, it slows your heart down. Also, you by breathing in, you give plenty of oxygen to your brain, so you feel energized more. And then, like just just take a physical, just just calming down thing. At the same time, while you're doing this, it's very recommended to just brush your hand or like just just touch your body or massage your neck. Because the physical touch, uh, brain loves physical touch. You know, like how kids, when, you know, when we were kids, we feel uncomfortable and scared, we just yeah. run for the hug, right? Like, oh, just hug me, mommy. It's the same still works, you know, because brain just always reacts to the touch very well. So when you wow. feel stressed out, something happened, you, you rehearse, you know, you just think about some Bible verse or, or some affirmation. You repeat, repeat, repeat. At the same time, you breathe in. Breathe out and just massage your neck or massage your fingers. That is awesome, Lolita. Oh, man. So uh, the tips and techniques I hear you saying are taking breaks, stretching, 
play music, watch videos, funny videos, breathe in and breathe out. Those are, are some really awesome techniques. So let me ask you this, because I know we all have bad days from time to time, and some days are worse than others. How do you recognize when all of the demands, all, when all of the demands that are being placed on you have caused you to be at a stress level that's dangerous? How do you recognize that? You can feel that you burn out. Or you, you know what, the first thing that I know how I can recognize when I'm stressing out, you're just feeling your pulse, you know, just the heart start racing, you know, something is not normal now, then you can, you know, think, okay, what are you doing? Or you feel like you're constantly in a, in a rush, you don't feel like you're finishing the, you know, there is no finish line, you know, the more you do it, the, the finish line continuously running ahead of you, or uh, you could be in a, such a total burnout that you don't want to even get out of the bed because you think about what tomorrow looks like. It's like, oh, my gosh, I have to do all of this. I don't know how to do this or have to face something. And you just want to go back to sleep because you, you, you're not capable of dealing with all of that. And everyone dealing different way. You know, some people, you can look at them and they look, they look so calm. But it doesn't mean that they're not stressing out. So, and there is, there is a difference between introverts and extroverts. So um, I read there was a research done that an extrovert person, actually it's very good that they get their emotions out, not kind of, you know, putting all deep down and don't get out. Like it's just imagining it's like, a, you know, stress is like a glass of water, you know, and you need to get that water out of it. And um, I read that those um, and the introverts who keep all the emotions inside themselves, they're actually getting more sick than the extroverts. So if you feel like you burn out or you just, you just had it something, talk to someone and, you know, vent. But also I recommend if you don't want to talk with anyone or like, oh, I have problems, I don't want to tell anybody, just write a letter. Just, you know, if you feel overwhelmed and thinking, oh my gosh, I have so much to do, I don't know how I'm going to face this. Just take a piece of paper, a pen, and recommend it to write on a piece of paper because brain loves concentrating when you write, you know, instead of typing. Although, okay, if you really want to type, you know, go ahead as long as you get all of those feelings, those thoughts, everything out on the paper. You know, you just, just put it all yeah. out. And so it, also, if you, if you feel like you cannot get um, a hand of all the things you need to do during the day, and it could be, you know, your business, your work, your kids, anything, laundry, you know, Make a to-do list and then look at that to-do list and then think about what can you delegate. And you should not be afraid asking for help. Someone always can help. Even if you are a person who lives by yourself, and let's say like you're a business owner and, and you have so many things to do, you can delegate and you can hire some person who can do your social media or they can do marketing that they're doing very well. It's just no way that you can do everything by yourself with all the stuff that we have to do. So you look at the, what you can yes. delegate. Also, you look all the list and you look at really judge, is it important? Because there's so many things that we do that we think is going to move us forward, but they really don't. And then, you know, finding time. Just think of, you know, look at your day and just w one week, write it down all the activities that you did, what time and how long it took you. And then after one week, you can look and you can see your patterns and then you can immediately can see where are your time drainers. So then maybe you can cross out some activities or you can make them, you know, less of that. And, and then you get the routine. The brain loves the routine. So, you know, you know because then, the, you know, the brain knows what, what to expect. There's nothing to worry about. It's just, you know, that's how we self-preserve. So the more routine you will have, the better it is for you because you know what you expect. And ask for help. You know, we, we're all in the group. And then also the ultimate question is, no matter what happens, no matter something happened um, in front of you or somebody talked to you or you have a goal, you always ask yourself, will this matter in a year or two? And if it doesn't matter, that will not make any difference in your life, then stop doing it. Don't pay attention to that. You know, it could be we get – our energy sucks on little things that we think are very important. You know, like, for example, I know some ladies who clean the whole kitchen before they go to sleep. And they're stressing yeah. out about it. I had a client like that. She's like, I cannot go to sleep if I haven't cleaned the whole kitchen. And I'm so tired. Mm. It's already midnight. And I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> you know, she's doing this to herself. Right. 
you know, just give yourself a slack and you can do it tomorrow. So, you know, really right. evaluate, like, is it really worth it? Where is your energy going? Because I can tell you, if you can put all of this on the paper and you can look at it, you will see it right away, what things that you can get rid of it. Oh, man, yes. I, and you mentioned time drainers, and I know that I have a couple of time, time drainers <laughs> that I kind of get sucked into, uh, and I need to make sure that I pay attention to, to those and try to banish them as much as, as much as possible. Now, I have heard that some stress can be good, what can possibly be good about stress when it does so much to your body negatively? Physically, our body does not really understand when is a positive or when is a negative stress. Um, so really, it comes to the how are you labeling that? You know, what is your attitude towards that? And if it's a great example, if you heard of um, Mel Robbins, how she she says this exercise when you are um, going to speak somewhere or you have to do something that is kind of gets your um, your hands sweaty and your heart rate high, you just tell yourself, I'm so excited. I am so excited. I'm so excited this thing's going to happen. And what is really happening, the, the physical body still feel, you know, heart rate and, and sweating palms, but your attitude will be very different because it, then it looks like there's something exciting. So it really depends on, you know, on that, on, on what's really happening. Well, for example, a, a bride uh, who is on her wedding day could be, you know, very excited uh, that is her, um, is, is her wedding day. That could be, it's out of ordinary. So it is already uh, on the stress zone. Even vacations are really actually stressing for your body too because you change the time when you sleep, you change the food patterns. So there are some things that are happening, but there is no way that we as humans can live every single day in the routine. We need to have some stresses. And it really, I think the stress really, what's, is, it, when it's used the right way, it is really moving us forward. You just imagine if we will be fine, you know, just riding horses all day long, um, then we will never have cars, right? <laughs> because we will be like, yeah, right. I'm good on my horse. And we will never have cars. You know, or, you know, there are right. so, many, so, so many inventions really coming off from the necessity. And necessity really came because somebody was stressing out about so much. They said, come on, I just cannot do this anymore. So we need stress because we go to, you know, for more things. We, we're moving forward as a humanity. But at the same time, you see, we, if, if we sit for another two months inside the home, you cannot do anything and you just have to do the same thing over and over you can go nuts, you know. You, we crave that change. We crave, you know, to, to do a little bit of, of stress. And that's why when you have a new goal and you want to achieve something, it's very scary because, well, it's outside of your comfort zone. You know, I heard they say if, if it's not scary, that means it's not big enough. So it's, mm. some stress is always good. Okay. You just have to make sure that it is something that, um, you know, um, it's kind of like that glass, you know, and if you're working on a new goal, you have to work it and take a break and you work and take a break, but you just cannot continuously do it and, and, and do it and do it because you're just going to break down. It's like a car, you know, you, you, you are like a car that needs maintenance. You cannot just continuously yes. running the car without changing oil. You know, you have to change it. Otherwise, it's going to stop. So you need to, you know, there is plenty of good stress that you really need, but too much can be damaging. Oh, man, Lalita. Your tips and techniques for handling stress, I see why you are a stress management expert. I, I, you, the tips are amazing. Thank you for sharing that. So I have one last question. I always like to ask my guests a question that's not really on the topic of, you know, this is not going to be on the topic of stress management, uh, but it's just an interesting question. If you could go back to visit your younger self, what would you say to her? What would you tell a young Lolita? I will tell her first, stop stressing out about what other people think because they really think of only about themselves. Mm. You know, wow. there was, Dr. Amen, I was watching PBS one day and Dr. Amen, who is the, the doctor about brain work and all, I like how he, he put it. He said, when you're 20, you are, you know, worry what other people think of you. When you're 40, 
you don't care what other people think of you. And when you're 60, you realize nobody was thinking about you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes, I I can attest to that. As I'm moving into 40, I can tell you I care less and less about uh, what people are saying around me. Lolita, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Can you please take the time to let everyone know how they can get a copy of your book or book a stress management coaching session so accurately named, Kick Stress in the Butt for their staff? Oh, well, you're welcome to go to my website. It's beamazingyou.com, all spelled out. And there are links to register for one-on-one consultation with me. Or if you want to invite me to your company, uh, do Lunch and Learn. I do workshops to teach how to manage stress specifically in the work environment. And uh, my book um, is Crest Stress While You Work. I'm available on Amazon. And, um, yeah, pretty much also on LinkedIn there is some information. So you're welcome to uh, write uh, in my an email or write a message on social media, on Facebook, I'm Lolita Gwarin or Be Amazing You as well. So there are plenty of ways how to reach and, and get more information. And on social media, I'm always post some video or some PDF or some uh, a good tip or trick. So I hope everyone who's interested, go and get some value. Stress is a hormonal response from the body. The more stress you have upon you, the more your body systems are affected negatively. I encourage you to realize demands and worries that are weights on your shoulders. Stress can overburden your mind and affect your decision making. And ladies, unfortunately, we are more prone to stress than men. So remember to take breaks, do your breathing, and do activities that bring you joy. Thank you so much for listening. Continue to strive for more and live your best life now. If you're interested in more information about Lolita and her stress management consulting business, please visit my website, www.striveformorepodcast.com. See you in the next episode.